I hope you're pumped up to just take control of your body between now and the holidays to make yourself just feel better, stand a little taller, increase that self-esteem. And I think you'll find that the holidays are much more enjoyable when you are on a plan that really keeps you reeled in. You're watching Developing Potential with Diana Koulian. Hi, friends. Welcome back. Today, we're talking about losing some weight before the holidays. Now, the holidays are quickly approaching, and most of us really don't think about weight loss until January 1 or January 2, right? After the dust has settled from all of the celebrating and all of the indulging. But it's kind of depressing, isn't it? To let yourself get to that point and then, like, all the fun is over because the holidays have passed. It's still dreary outside because it's winter. And you're like, man, my pants are tight. So what do we do today to avoid that moment? And instead, doing some proactive work now to feel great, not only on Christmas. I like to think of this as like giving yourself the gift of abs for Christmas or whatever that is for you, a smaller pant size, and then starting the new year feeling good already. And that's not to say that you can't then crush some more goals in January and February because everybody's motivated at that time, but you're going to start off closer to your ultimate goal than you would. So my motivation with this um, episode is to really just pump you up as I had this whole pump up session with myself the other day, and I wrote out my whole plan for my fitness and my weight loss between now and Christmas. And I was like, you know what? I feel like my viewers would enjoy this. And so it's really, I'm just going to walk you through what I do for myself when I set a fitness goal and then kind of almost like do my own little challenge. And then you can, you know, make it fit you and change the details that you need to change to really set up a doable, achievable six-week plan for just feeling and looking good for the holidays. Another aspect to this is the tie between our mental health and our bodies. And I was looking up some studies recently, and one of them that stood out to me was really tying... Um, muscle strengthening exercises and activities with mental health. And really what the research has found is that the higher frequency and the greater intensity of your muscle strengthening activities protects against anxiety and depression symptoms. So really what that means is you work out hard, you feel good about yourself, and then whatever mental emotional struggles you're dealing with are going to get smaller, which totally makes sense, right? I know this is true for me. When I'm on my meal plan and I'm on my fitness and I'm making it a priority, that's when I feel the best about myself. And when I feel confident and good about myself, it really just bleeds into all other parts of my mental and emotional health. So it's kind of like a bunch of great reasons to really set ourselves up for a little free holiday fitness challenge. So let's dive right into it. So these are the steps that I go through when I create a little challenge for myself. The first one is to set a goal. Now, I don't want you to set a goal of, I want to lose 20 pounds or I want to lose X amount of inches because an outcome goal is something that you really cannot control. Like I can create a meal plan and an exercise plan and stick with it for the next six weeks, but I cannot control what my weight is going to be at the end of it, right? And so when we set a SMART goal, we want to make it something that we can control. I'm going to stick with my meal plan, you know, six out of seven days for the next six weeks. That's a goal you can achieve, right? Or I'm going to do, you know, 20 workouts between now and the end of this challenge or whatever that works out to. So I like to do um, adherence to the meal plan and I always work in some 
treat meals because I, for me, I have to have some of that freedom in order for it to work. We want to set ourselves up for success. So the kind of goal that you want to set is stuff you can control. So the number of days that you're going to stick with your meal plan, the number of workouts that you're going to get, and be specific, this number of resistance training workouts and this number of cardio workouts, and then other lifestyle factors. Sleep being a really big one. So I'm going to get an average of seven hours of sleep a night, which is kind of a goal for me. Um, Whatever that number is for you, because we want to set these other lifestyle factors in line with, you know, really helping our hormone levels to help with that weight loss. Drinking water. Now, this is a goal that you can control, right? I'm going to drink 17 ounces of water right when I wake up in the morning and X amount of ounces of water throughout the rest of the day. Um, Other lifestyle factors like drinking a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar before you start eating your food for the day Um, or setting um, an intermittent fasting window, which is part of my plan. So very first thing, we're sitting down, we're looking at achievable goals and we're defining what these goals are. We're staying away from I'm going to lose this amount of weight or I'm going to you know, we're not looking for outcome goals. We're looking for process goals. All right, the next step in creating your six-week Lose It for Christmas challenge is getting your starting stats. So this is the painful part. I will completely admit to that. But I've also found that if you don't do this piece, you're not going to stick with the plan. It's like we need this moment of honesty and this moment of truth to really evaluate where we are today, to get that motivation to stick it through the six weeks or however many weeks you're going to do. Because maybe you're watching this after the holidays and you're like, I'm going to do this for 12 weeks and good for you. So whatever time frame you've created, we got to know where we're starting. And so that means getting on the scale. And for weighing yourself, I recommend do it first thing in the morning after you go pee, just get on the scale, bite the bullet, and start recording your weight. Taking a photo. Now, I think it's really important to take your stats in multiple ways. So your weight, which we're not going to be super concerned with, but we do want to know where we're starting. We do want to watch our progress. Um... For me, the photo is honestly the measurement that means the most to me. Because when you take your before picture, and I like to take pictures throughout the process, maybe every other week, um, you can really visually see what you might not see in the number on the scale. Body composition changes. And so we're so driven to want the number on the scale to change. But really, what we're looking for is a different shape to our body. So our body can change shape even as our weight doesn't change the way we think it should. So taking that picture and taking it in something you're comfortable in, but I do it in a bathing suit. It's, you know, it can definitely be uncomfortable, but nobody has to see these pictures but you. Um, But just remind yourself that when you do transform your body, you're going to be so excited to show people your before picture, like that picture that you don't even want to look at yourself today, you will be so excited to show where you started. And so it's so important to take that before picture. And then the third way to to really track your progress is measurements. And so taking a measurement of your waist, taking a measurement of your hips, and then I like to do um, just one of my legs. So like the thickest part of your leg and keeping those measurements throughout because You know, this is another way to track how your body shape is changing, whereas the weight might not be showing you all the progress that's really happening. Okay, so you've set your process-oriented goals. You've got your starting stats. And now you got to plan your meal plan. And I've found that the more specific you can get with defining exactly what your meal plan days look like, and not really worrying about variety. I mean, we're talking about a six-week program. Um, and if you're going to do a longer program, let's say you're going to do a 12-week program, then having a specific meal plan for maybe the first four weeks, 
and then the next four weeks, and then the final four weeks. Um, but you don't have to have variety. You know, when we're doing a challenge, we're telling ourselves like, hey, I want to kind of push myself and I want to create, you know, this this change, this transformation in my body in a concentrated amount of time. And so we do have to give up some things. And if having some variety in your food is something you're going to give up for that time frame, like that's okay. And what I found is when you do this and you make your meal plan very specific, I'm going to eat X, Y, and Z at each of these different meals, it makes it easier because you don't have to be making decisions all day. Now, you can certainly, you know, know your target macros and, you know, slightly adjust exactly what foods you eat to, to meet those macros within the six weeks um, if that works for you. But if you've had difficulty sticking with a fitness plan and a meal plan in the past, I would say make it as simple as possible. Eat the same thing every single day. Um, so for me, and I'm just going to share my current macros just for my little pre-holiday thing that I'm doing. I'm not saying that these are specifically correct for you because it depends on your body size. It depends on your muscle mass and your goals. But just to give you an idea of where I'm starting right now, um, so my target protein for the day is 144 grams. And as you're figuring out your target protein, there's different ways to do it. But in a muscle building program, which is what I'm doing, you know, really getting that resistance training in, you want a little more than a gram of protein per pound of desired body weight. Right, so if my um, ideal body weight is 125, I'm getting 144 grams of protein because it's more than you know one gram per pound. It's going to be great fuel, and it's making up about 50 percent of my calories for the day. Now, again, this is a, a shortened challenge, you know, window. I'm not suggesting doing this forever, but this is what I'm doing to get some results right before the holidays. So for carbs. You know, when we're doing a shortened, you know, six-week challenge, we really do want to cut our carbs down. And the carbs we do eat, we want to make sure are really wholesome carbs and not processed carbs. So 10% around there of your calories coming from carbs is a really good um, target. For me, I'm doing under 100 grams, so about 60 grams of carbs per day right now. Um, and so that will make my carb intake 10% or less of my um, daily intake. So fat is going to be about 40%. And it's really important as you're planning out your meal plan to be getting fat from really wholesome sources and avoiding like the trans fats and the vegetable fats, right? The processed fats. So looking at avocados, looking at some wholesome dairy, if you're able to have dairy um, in your diet, looking at, you know, just animal fat, like whatever's in your in your meat products for the day, um, nuts and seeds, right? We want to stay away from processed fats and really processed foods. So as you're choosing, like, what are the actual um, foods that are making up these macros? You know, chicken, vegetables, um, brown rice, um, oats, you know, looking at fibrous vegetables, salmon, Eggs are a big one that are in my meal plan. So this gives you an idea. But really, you know, whether you're working with um, a nutritionist or maybe you've done a challenge in the past and you have different versions of meal plans or you know your body enough to know like, hey, when I eat from these, you know, these specific foods in these specific portions, I see results. Like we all kind of know what to do. So whether you take some pointers from from what I'm doing here with the, you know, 50% of my calories coming from protein, about 10% from carb, and then 40% from fat for this challenge, or, or you find what's worked for you in the past and just really write it out in detail and then stick with the script, right? Going back to our goal, our goal was process oriented. It was, I'm going to stick with the meal plan six out of seven days each week, right? That's something you can achieve. So what is that meal plan? The more specific you are on exactly what that meal plan is, the better your chances of sticking with it. Okay, so moving on to exercise. 
again, really setting the goal for I'm going to do X amount of cardio sessions in this challenge. I'm going to do X amount of resistance training sessions. And there's so much freedom when you choose your exercise and you choose the activities you do. Um, But it's got to be practical, right? It has to be something that's convenient enough that you can practically fit it into your life, interesting enough for you, like something you like doing enough that you'll do it. So this is completely up to you. Um, For me, it's pretty traditional. Like I enjoy running. My life is busy. And so it's something that gets pushed out if I don't make really intentional effort. So in doing this challenge, it's like, hey, I'm going to get X amount of runs in between now and the end of the year. And then just keeping a tally, right? Going in the, the gym and lifting weights. And that's something that I've done for years. And it's something that I'm not like always motivated to do. And so this is really helpful for me to be like, hey, and over the next six weeks, I'm getting in the gym four days a week. And I have, you know, programs that I've used in the past where it's like, this is the exact program I'm going to do when I'm in the gym and then check it off. So as you start your challenge, do your measurements every week, right? You don't have to get on the scale every single day, but once a week, get on the scale, write down the number, right? Note it. Um, Take your actual measurements, compare it to the beginning, and then take those photos, and I find that the photos really are the, the piece of data that tells the story the most. And then make adjustments as needed. If your meal plan's not really working, let's say you're two or three weeks in and you're like, man, I really wanted to see more weight loss or I'm not, not getting the results I wanted, consider reducing carbs. If you're, if you're eating more than 10% of your calories from carbs, consider reducing that. Or the opposite, if you're finding like, I don't have energy for my workouts and I'm like not really able to push much weight in the gym, maybe you need to increase your carbs, right? So finding that sweet spot of I'm able to perform, but I'm also seeing these changes in my body. And then finally, we got to work in some accountability, right? So for me, I get so much accountability out of like writing things down and being consistent with like tracking what I'm doing and then getting like this positive reinforcement from like another hash mark. Like I did another workout. I did another day on my meal plan. I the other day I literally wrote out like a grid in my in my notebook of like, okay, here's all the days that I have to stick with my meal plan. And then at the end of the day, like Xing out that box and just getting that satisfaction of like, hey, I did it. Right. Like I'm taking another step towards this goal. Um spending time visualizing your results. And this is a step that's easy to skip over and to kind of discount like, oh, you know, thinking about what you want to achieve might not sound like it's worth your time. But every time in my life that I've lost a significant amount of weight or made some kind of big transformation, I've spent time in the theater of the mind visualizing what are these changes that I'm working towards? What does life look like at this new size with this new mindset, right? And just living in the momentum towards your goal. And it's a huge piece of really achieving what you want to achieve. With a fitness goal, you know, we have this benefit of when we're exercising, we're utilizing bilateral stimulation, And there's so much that happens in the brain when we're using bilateral stimulation. And that's as simple as walking, right? If you walk, you're going from one side of your body to the other, right? And so what happens in our brain when we start to do imaginative um, visualization and creative thinking while we're doing this bilateral stimulation, there's more integration in the brain. And so um, the emotional part of us, like that limbic part integrates with our logical part and these two parts have to get along in order to let us see through a goal to achieve what we want they have to get along and we've talked about the chimpanzee being that limbic system and for most of us we don't complete our fitness goals and we get off our meal plans because the chimpanzee tells us to right 
this limbic part of us kind of takes over and pulls us away from this goal, this logical cognitive goal that we have. And so the more that we can integrate these parts of our brain to work together, the better our odds of achieving it. And so the practical way that you do this is, you know, during your cardio sessions, you're going to be doing bilateral stimulation. And so spend that time in the theater of your mind, visualizing the outcome, visualizing adherence to the plan, right? We only get to the outcome if we can do the meal plan and do the eating window and do the workouts, right? So visualize the process and start to just build this this connection between the different parts of your brain where they're all on the same page, all heading towards that same target goal. You know, we've talked in the past about Maxwell Maltz and his um, Psycho-Cybernetics book, and this servo mechanism, right? This success seeking mechanism that if we put in the, the input, we put in, here's the target, here's what we want. And then we reinforce it and we think about it and we add in that bilateral simulation. We're setting ourselves up for ultimate success. So I hope this helps. I hope you're pumped up to just take control of your body between now and the holidays to make yourself Just feel better, stand a little taller, increase that self-esteem. And I think you'll find that the holidays are much more enjoyable when you are on a plan that really keeps you reeled in and prevents that, you know, January 1 or January 2 moment of dread when you're, you're standing on the scale or you're just feeling like, oh, I let myself go. Like, no, let's not let ourselves go this year. Let's stick with it and feel amazing. So thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. And I will be back next week. Thanks for watching Developing Potential with Diana